Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to Slan Team Development. So we've looked at starting rosters for every team in Blood Bowl, we've looked at tournament rosters for them as well and we've covered every star player. Now we're going team by team and having a look at all the positionals on it and what skills you want to give them in league. So basically we're looking at league play, we're looking at star player points, we're looking at what skill and when. And today we're going to be having a look at the Slan Team. So the Slan team rules, they're unofficial. They're for the NAF. Uh, the NAF have released a thing called the NAF Rules for Tournaments 2021. And it's got corn teams and Slan teams. So you can still have leaping, jumping nonsense in your Blood Bowl League. Um, if you want to kind of know who they are and you've not come across Slan before, Kislev in Blood Bowl 2 is probably the, the closest analogy. Basically what they did was they reskinned the jumping around frog team space frogs that built the warhammer world and i think invented blood bowl uh, they reskinned them to a uh, kind of russian circus folk from kislev so you've got kislev in blood bowl 2 and you've got slan on the tabletop they've all basically got leaping skills so they're quite interesting they play very uniquely one player that isn't unique but is very interesting is the croxagore so they have a croxagore to quote sean bean kind of paraphrase sean bean they have a croxagore not a cave troll a croxagore so this guy is your standard croxagore 140,000, movement six strength five agility five plus passing nothing armor 10 plus bonehead loner four plus mighty blow plus one prehensile tail and thick skull so with armor 10 plus strength five and thick skull this guy is just not going anywhere one of the vulnerabilities of the slant team is attrition and having that croxagore able to go on your line it gives you a really solid defense but quite frankly not a bad blitzer either at movement six and strength five so skills wise what you want to put on your croxagore is a combat skill it's going to be fighting almost every turn so cheap end you've got brawler or juggernaut so six spp and you can pick one of those uh, the more expensive end if you're willing to grind it out and wait for 12 spp you can 100 percent guarantee yourself a blocks of gore not a bad shout um other skills you've got guard will be massively beneficial to the crocs of gore as well you have to put three guys on the line the crocs will normally be one and if you've got guard the two line frogs you put with him are going to be strength four line frogs that's going to protect them on defense and it's going to give them a solid attacking position on offense so guard is great it will make two of your other players great most of the time uh, brawler will just mean that you can block more uh, reliably with the croxagore and juggernaut means that if you're going to be blitzing with him you're good to go tier two skills grab armbar and break tackle are all reasonable for the croxagore grab is going to be useful to control the line of scrimmage armbar will tailor in very nicely with prehensile tail they're dodging away at minus one and if they fail they go down and you get plus one to their armor breaks so it's basically mighty blow for them falling over pretty sweet break tackle is not as good as it used to be for the croxagore but it will give you plus two to your dodge rolls taking it from a five plus to a three plus so if you do want to blitz around with your croxagore break tackle three plus is okay a multiple block as you develop your team can be useful you have to keep it supported you're not going to have a ton of guard on the slant team so um you're going to be making two strength three blocks you're going to need assists at that point like i said you can save up for block pro is also pretty sweet for the croxagore it will help it with failed boneheads it will help uh, kind of overcome that loner situation most of the time you're going to be rolling two or three dice when it comes to blocking so re-rolling everything's not going to be a bad thing on a three plus you get to re-roll one dice that's going to be useful for that stretch play uh, dodge is going to keep you uh, up and about but that's quite a deep skill frenzy is not a terrible idea your strength five if you've got brawler and you're deploying him on the line frenzy just gives you two lots of two die blocks to murder a dude with mighty blow not bad at all basically the croxigore is a solid solid big guy and uh, can be a real anchor to the slant team so the slant blitzer is not a blitzer in the traditional sense in that he has no combat skills so the blitzer comes in at 110,000. movement seven strength three agility three plus passing four plus which isn't bad armor nine plus diving tackle jump up pogo stick and very long legs so pogo stick means is leaping anywhere everywhere forever on a three plus 
compared to everybody else leaping around, that's really, really solid. So the advantage of this player is it comes with jump up, which means when you fail that leap, he's got armor 9+, plus, probably going to be all right. Come round to your next turn, or if he's been knocked onto the ground, he just pops up for free movement 7. Also means he can block from the ground. Diving tackle means that if your opponent dodges away, you can place him prone, reduce their die roll by 2, and often that's going to be enough to make them fail their... Um, their dodge roll and that means that it will come back to your turn because that will be a turnover and immediately you can use jump up to just stand up as if none of it had happened. Blitzers are really interesting. They are better defenders than they are, than they are on offense. However, they get general agility and strength so you can go a ton of different ways with the blitzer. Combat skill comes first most of the time so block as a ball carrier, wrestle as a ball sacker you can have up to four blitzers on a slant team. They are very expensive. Um, one to wrestle, to leap, wrestle in will be really useful and others to block to carry the ball. Dodge will come in handy, again, just to keep you standing. Guard will be really, really, really useful here. So if you've got some slam blitzers, having guard on one and wrestle on another means you've got a pretty good combo there, being able to get a one or two die block uh, to sack the ball carrier. And with slam, the more chances you can take to pop that ball out, the more chances you'll be able to just absolutely farm those TDs in. More TDs equals more gold, and you need about 1250 to fill out your roster. So you kind of want to race to the finish line as much as possible. Mighty Blow again. Where these guys are the only strength caddies on the team minus the Croxagore, having Mighty Blow or at least one of your blitzers gives you the Crox to block and the Slan to blitz, or the Blitzer to blitz. So there's a ton of stuff you can do there. Block is not bad. Wrestle on one. Guard on the rest, Mighty Blow to fill out. There's a lot of work to do here, but when they start brewing those skills, when you've got Block, Guard, Mighty Blow guys, they're doing some serious work for you. Um, tackle, Sidestep, Frenzy later on for your team development, depending on your meta. Now, they got Passing on a double, and it can be useful to take on the ball. Because, not just on the kickoff, but these guys get then to move for three squares when your opponent passes. Again, it will depend on your league, and that's one of the cool things about this format, is if you've got a 16-team league and half of them are elves, on the ball is going to go up in value. Um, tackle will as well, probably. Stat-wise, not a terrible player to save up for. Take block, then save. You may just want to go for a cheeky stat up, because movement 8 is great. Agility 2+, plus when you've got pogo stick, is superb, especially as this bad boy is strength 3. Rolling that sweet plus one strength is going to cost you 100, just 190 at that point, 210 once you've taken block. But for a three plus leap in and then two dice with a combat skill, Slan Blitzers, one of them. Probably the only player in the game where strength is just absolutely delicious. And uh, while you're going to take a massive hit on TV, it already comes with a very solid leap. Three plus leap in. The team has 50k rerolls. I'm happy with that. I'm happy to burn a reroll to get that guaranteed, basically, two die block on any ball carrier ever. You will lose friends, but you will win games. Oh, I love these players. So, Slan catchers, you can take up to four of them. This is Slan for me. So, these guys are 80,000, movement seven, strength two, agility two plus, passing four plus, armor eight plus, pogo stick, very long legs and diving catch we'll come back to diving catch but pogo stick with edge two plus means they are two plus leaping everywhere they're kind of like slow aerial gutter runners and i think that's why i love them so much so they've got diving catch which means they're plus one to catch an accurate pass they're not really going to be doing that very often but if someone knocks a ball out near them if they are on the kick return uh diving catch will come in handy every now and again not it's kind of like a freebie skill i wouldn't worry too much about it being your main game plan although being able to catch on a plus one for a quick pass or something like that's going to be okay except the fact that your entire team now has passing four plus so that's why i don't think it's going to come up all that often take dodge on these guys as soon as you can movement seven agility two plus pogo stick two plus dodge means that these guys are just going to be able to walk out of anything reappear somewhere else and all you've got to do is just not roll ones that dodge roll is going to mean that you actually you're going to be able to jump out of spots and there's going to be some circumstances where a three plus dodge with a re-roll is going to be better for you than risking a two plus no re-roll leap for example if you don't have re-rolls so dodge is going to keep it's going to do that but also where you are a strength two player who is likely to end up with the ball it's going to 
decrease the opponent's ability to knock you down by one side of a dice and that is going to be really useful moving on from then you've got the same kind of route as blitzers block will keep these guys up blodge very lovely wrestle on one is not the worst thing so you've got the blitzer who's leaping in on a three plus for a one die block or you've got the slam catcher who's leaping in on a two plus for a two die block with wrestle haven't run the numbers but they are comparable the problem is the catcher is going to be way 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 weaker but that cheeky two plus dodge is awesome uh, sorry the cheeky two plus leap is fantastic these are kind of your ball carriers on this team as well so sure hands is going to be useful as you develop throughout league it feels a bit of a shame to take sure hands when you're doing it on a two plus so maybe take that with a side but these guys are the ones who are going to be jumping into places to pick up the ball so i do like sure hands on one catcher because we say sure hands is going to come up twice a game normally um if you've on defense and you're slam and you're popping the ball out then sure hands is going to come up four times in the game and at that point it's actually quite a good skill to have sidestep sprint sure feet just going to make it faster jump up is awesome on a team we've got a lot of leap this guy's armor 8 plus and strength 2 so jump up is going to be less useful unless you are using him as a retriever uh, and you need him to be uh, just movement 7 forever. Pro is quite an interesting angle, I should have covered this on the blitzer, but pro gives you the ability to reroll one dice on the roll of a 3 plus. So while we say that leap doesn't have an integral reroll, the pro skill gives you that reroll on a 3 plus so it's not a gimme by a long shot but something like the salan catcher or the blitzer is only failing on a 3 plus and then on a 3 plus you get to reroll it so it's actually really good odds. I like pro but I think you just get more out of block and dodge early on. If you've got four catchers and you've got time, then actually one or two catchers with guard as well uh, is just going to be able to plonk themselves exactly where you need them to be able to make profitable blocks. On the ball on one of these guys is pretty sweet. It's not quite as good now. Their passing has decreased from 2+. plus to four plus uh, but still pretty decent gives you three extra squares and when your opponent passes you get three extra squares which makes them movement 10 in those kind of circuit that uh, situation break tackle is also not a bad pickup you can leap into places on a two plus but being able to dodge into places on a one plus might be better for you especially if you followed the rules and you've taken dodge nice and early and nerves of steel makes some pretty sweet catches and they do actually have access to this again these guys maybe take dodge and then maybe just wait and take that stat up movement eight is going to unlock them agility one plus is just broken um, and strength three is something i'm not sure i'd want to take but it's it's a lot of cash but then you're a two plus strength three leaper and you can really start going to town the interesting thing with these positionals is oh, the, the, they get more interesting when you take a stat up and they're each only one skill away from being really good dodge on the catcher block or wrestle on the blitzer and they start really fulfilling their potential and then i i would be interested to save one of them just go for that stat up and just see what happens all right we've got slan lineman to finish it up 60k movement six strength three agility three plus passing four plus armor nine plus pogo stick very long legs so these guys have got decent armor and they leaping around on a three plus you're not going to be leaping forever with these guys, but they will come in handy. And what that does is the fact that they are Edge 3, they are Strength 3, and they've got Movement 6, means they can do stuff. When you've got just Slan Linemen, you are not out of the fight. They're not Elves by a long shot, but that 3 plus leap with a pogo stick is often better than a 2 plus dodge into something bad. So there's definitely an opportunity there. Again, block wrestle on these guys is going to be awesome. Block's going to keep them alive. Wrestle's going to put a ton of pressure on when you need a blitz. Uh, maybe one lineman with wrestle and the rest with block to do some good work. Jump up is sweet on a double if you're going to be wrestling or if you're going to be leaping. Guard on a double, again, it's just going to be really beneficial. That three plus leap to get you wherever is okay. I cannot stress enough, leap as little as possible, but it is something that can really combo off brilliantly. And again, dodge is also going to be really useful. Fend, tackle, kick also very good skills on the linemen so do you take a random general actually probably the first two slan linemen that get three spp i'm going to roll that random for them because i think you get some really good outcomes block is good dauntless can be really good you're going to have big guys you're going to have chaos warriors and stuff actually being able to leap blitz a chaos warrior and then roll what two plus to get equal strength to power them down <laughs> power him down to get a one die block it's going to be useful dirty player probably one of the only linemen i wouldn't be excited to take dirty player on but 
you can pull it off and it will come in handy more often than not. Fend is going to be okay to control advances. Frenzy will be great on a strength three leaping player. Jump into places, Frenzy Blick. He's going to go down, but that ball's going to probably come out as well. Kick is going to unlock this team. I love Kick more than anything in the world when it comes to Slan. You can pin them back and just garbage churn their line. I am personally a big fan of dropping it low and close to one side and just pouncing. So you can deploy heavy and use kick to control where the ball goes. It's awesome. Pro is just going to mean that this guy is your leaping dude. At that point, it kind of becomes another blitzer for you. Shadowing is going to be okay. Movement six is, is all right. Strip ball will be useful because you get the opportunity to leap blitz. Sure hands, ball carrier, tackle, safety, wrestle, safety. Taking a couple of randoms, uh, you can start to build up extra positionals when it comes to the linemen because they've already got that that special thing and that special thing is the ability to leap anywhere on a three plus and survive with armor nine plus um yeah they do have armor nine plus i had to check then because i was like that's quite high but these guys are great and a whole lean whole whole team of linemen is great because that's what you're going to end up with most of the time a croxagor two positionals and linemen is probably going to be about where you get to these guys are toolkit and the ability now to get one touchdown with them and then take a random skill is going to start developing your team to be really interesting. Oh man, I do these videos and I tend to get really excited about each of the teams as I go through. A couple of them I had to fake. You've probably seen through. Sorry Nurgle fans out there. This team, however, is going to be so much fun. When these linemen start... Basically, when, when people start getting skills, this team is going to start cooking. And they're going to be a real challenge and I like that. Anyway, going to wrap up this video here, guys. Please let me know what you think of Slan in Blood Bowl 2020. Yes, they're unofficial, but they play like nothing else. So I'm really glad that the NAF is at least including them in their tournaments. And I do recommend that you at least allow them in your leagues and things because there'll be a couple of players out there that actually want a new challenge. And a challenge that's reasonably well balanced is Slan. I'm going to disappear. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again soon for more Blood Bowl content. See you later. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.